I turned a corner to see my grandfather standing in the middle of an aisle. This happened to me once in high school. I was in a grocery store and turned a corner to see my grandfather standing in the middle of an aisle. Seeing how he lived about a thousand miles away, I was stunned. He looked up at me wide in his eyes and gave me the most heartfelt hi I've ever received. After returning the greeting, he put his arm on my shoulder and I asked how he'd been doing. The second he touched me, something changed. After staring at each other, we simultaneously realized we were complete strangers. The craziest part was the instant he realized we didn't know each other. He stopped looking like my grandfather as if his face changed. Freaks me the fuck out to this day. Walkie Talkies my little sister, call her Susie, and I were exploring a cottage a few years ago and came across a pair of walkie-talkies. Now this in itself wasn't unusual. It's an isolated, sprawling place shared by many friends and family who often leave things behind as they come and go. We run around in the night trying to find them out, and finding out there's about 10 to 20 minutes cutoff range. We're fooling around and eventually we're on opposite sides of the house when something like the following exchange goes down. At this point, I walk into the next room and see Susie looking through a bookshelf, walkie-talkie abandoned on the floor. She says hello to me and the giggling is still coming from the walkie-talkie. I look at her, I look at the walkie-talkie and ask, wait, who is this? The giggling stops on the other end of the line, there's nothing but dead air. Next couple houses a couple of kilometers away and there's nothing but woods and a spooky cave around us. Susie says she got bored of the walkie-talkie a while ago and denies any part in the goofy codename conversation. We search the place top to bottom and find no one and nothing that could have been making the call. We try the walkie-talkie a few more times but we are never able to raise our ghost caught girl again. I still accuse her of having been the voice on the other end of the line once in a while but deep down I know that when I told her what went down she showed real fear. My dad used to get up around 3 a.m. every morning for work. Starting at a very early age, I would wake up on my own and wander downstairs before he even left. One morning when I was about 4 years old, I made it to the bottom of the stairs and noticed that the front door was ajar. I opened it up and saw my father in his favorite work shirt making his way down the driveway to his truck in his typical work, for work fit outfit, plaid shirt and dickies. I swung the door open wide and yelled for him to come back for a hug before he left. He slowly turned around and just stared at me and started walking back towards the house. He was looking so strangely at me that it started to scare me and I began crying and asking what was wrong. Just as he had almost reached me, a pair of arms encircled me from behind in a bear hug. I turned my head to see my understandably freaked out father staring at his doppelganger. In the same outfit, the double took one look at my dad and ran down the driveway. Meanwhile, my dad yanked me in the house and locked the door. Weirdest morning ever. Never did quite figure that one out. I would not trust my four-year-old memory of the event if it wasn't also witnessed by my father. He won't really talk about it these days, but my mom has since told me that he called out of work and she spent the day reassuring him he wasn't a nutcase. The bathroom door closes. And hard. That happened to my brother. I was f taking a nap upstairs when I heard him yell, Hey, Delayed on 939, what are you doing? I go upstairs where I meet him, his face in a state of terror. What? At that point, the bathroom door at the end of the hallway uh, downstairs closed and hard. We were, only, we were the only two home. He said he saw me walk by him while he was in the kitchen and gave him a creepy smile. He then asked what I was doing and I kept walking. That's when he heard me ask what and turned around to see me at the bottom of the stairs. Bathroom door closes next. In the parking lot. Two years ago, my boyfriend killed himself. On the night that he did, it, I was sitting in my car outside of my apartment waiting for him. He texted me and said he was going on his way. From across the lot I see him, so I get out of my car and start walking towards him. After about three steps, I realize that he's walking in the other direction, so I yelled out his name, James, but he didn't turn around. Right as I was about to catch up to him, he rounded the corner. When I came around the corner, there was no one there. I had seen his face when I first saw him across the lot, I'm sure of it. It was dark, but I know it was him. Fast forward to the next morning after me calling him all night, I get a call from his brother telling me what happened. It was the same time that I saw him in the parking lot. Mom? 
I was maybe nine years old when this happened. We had relatively recently moved neighborhoods, and I, being the oldest of the three girls, got to have my own bedroom. I have my great-grandmother's full bed in the middle of my square room. I loved it. One night, I woke up sometime around 2 to 4 a.m., and I saw my mom standing in my doorway. Something about her was off. I don't remember anything if she was pale and translucent or silver, how she specifically looked, but she was standing in my doorway, staring at the wall across from her. I asked, Mom! Thinking that she had come in to tuck me in a bit, she started slowly walking down along the edge of my bed, and the whole time I was chanting, Mom! 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 She never registered a single word. She turned the corner and started walking up towards the head of the bed, still very slow, and when she reached about the pillow area where I was curled, she started to slowly tilt her head down to look at me and vanished. I freaked out immediately and I jumped out of bed and ran into my parents' room. Their sliding door was shut, so I opened it quietly and saw my parents fast asleep, the light on next to my mom's side, where she had been reading a book and passed out. It was even open to a page on her arm where it slipped from her hand. I know for a fact that she did not physically get up and has been in my room, and it to this day creeps me out when I remember that slow pace just walking around my room. Another story in the same house, but while we were in the process of moving, we bought the house from a man who died from a heart attack. It was a fixer-upper, and we only had been in the house a few nights. I woke up, again, to the 4 a.m., really thirsty, so I went down to the hall into the kitchen to get some water. There was a spill at the end of the hallway. You go right into the kitchen or left into the front room. I noticed something out of the corner of my eye and I discovered a rocking chair was moving. I assumed maybe the cat had jumped off of it, but then I remembered that she was sleeping on my bed. I grabbed water and peeked around the corner to look in the same room again, and I saw the rocking chair still moving. There was a mirror on the wall opposite to the chair, and I could see this faint outline of a person in the mirror rocking with the chair. I heard a little whispered, good night, and then the rocking chair slowed, like someone had lifted it. I was oddly not scared, just kind of soothed, and I suddenly ve felt very tired. I'm still not sure why. The next day, I asked my mother about the man that owned the house. She said that the hospice workers had found him dead in his favorite rocking chair in the front of the room, and that he had been a nice old man. I guess that's why he didn't scare me. On the roof. Not nursing related, but both are RN now. I was about the age of 10 and stayed home from school for being sick. Me and my sister have always been best friends. Well, she decided to stay home as long as I think she was 20 and in college at the time. I wanted to play hide and seek in our backyard. It was around 2 p.m., sun up and clear day. After I was counting, I began to look for her and found her smiling at me on the top of the garage on the roof. Me think it was odd. She was up there, said, come down, and she just smiled. I then heard, hear someone from behind me say, who are you talking to? It was my sister. To this day, I have no idea what it was on the garage house. It's about 50 years old. We live in it for about 30 years. Someone apparently died in a fire in that garage. And you can I woke up out of bed in the middle of the night. I walked out into the living room and saw my dad slumped over and walking to the front door. I just stood there and watched and he walked outside and sat down on the sidewalk that went up to the front door. I watched him through the window for a second and he just sat there staring into a tree with no expression on his face. He looked really pale and almost bluish. I then walked down to my parents' room and I woke up. My mom and asked her why my dad was sitting outside. Then I will never forget it. She said, what are you talking about? He's right here. And I looked over her and my dad was laying asleep in bed. Still scares me to think about it every day. This Dolpenganger incident has happened to me with my sibling before too. It is intense just because you're so sure they walked in and there's no way they could have. I was home alone and napping on the couch when I woke up to get some water. I sit back down and doze off the garbage door slams open as per usual my brother walks by. But the odd thing was my brother didn't say one word to me. He turned his head and smiled at me with no sort of inflection on his eyebrows. An open-eyed, ear-to-ear grin. I looked at him oddly and just brushed it off. I hadn't seen my brother all day and noticed he's wearing a green shirt and with his dark denim. The smile startled me because we hadn't been on speaking terms for a few months now. What was that about? Three hours later, my parents get home making his huge racket and I wake up. Ten seconds alter after my parents my brother walks in, I turn to my mom and say, he was just home. My mother dismisses what I said. I just picked him up from Ven City's house. He hasn't been home all day. And what is my brother wearing? A green shirt and dark denim. Okay, so my house is pretty much the epicenter of the messed up and unnatural. 
I've had things happen to me and around me, but most of the stuff that goes on isn't specifically towards me, but my little sister. A lot of times shit happens when I'm around my friends in broad daylight too. Like one time a couple of my friends and I were sitting in the living room watching television when a shadow passed over the room. That temperature dropped and the shadow shrunk until it took on a noticeable form. A shadow in the shape of a coffin with a vase of flowers on its lid floated along the walls, slowly making its way all around the room. Once it had completed its circuit, it faded away. Right away, the room became bright again. I've never heard of dark shadows taking the shape of inanimate objects or anything, and I doubt it was a ghost of a coffin. My friends left immediately. Later that day, as I played in my bedroom, my mom got a call from my grandmother that my uncle had died from some sort of infection brought on by open wounds. He was really into wade fishing, and I think it had something to do with it. The thing was he died around the same time as we were sitting in that living room. I'm not sure if it was the reason for the shadow, but it makes sense. The creepy occurrences did not end there. Once I was waiting for my sister in the dining room and I heard mom calling for me from a few rooms over. She sounded far away, her voice muffled. I got up and wandered into the hall. She called again. Jowder, I thought she needed me to help her lift something or clean something. Her voice sounded as if it was coming from a room. I slowly pushed the door open, letting the hall light spill into the darkened area. No one was in there. Then, quietly, the voice whispered my name in my ear. I, I screamed and ran out of the room, down the stairs, and into the family room. Mom was downstairs washing dishes. I started screaming at her that she was calling me upstairs. She freaked out but tried to assure me I had heard the TV. I didn't. I live in a two-story condominium, and when it's dark, it gets really creepy. One night, I was sitting downstairs on the desktop computer surfing the internet when my, mother, my sister told me she was going outside to play manhunt with our neighborhood friends. I said, okay, not really caring, and continued to serve. A little while, like 45 minutes, I heard my very squeaky front door opening and the deadbolt and lock snapping at my sister walks in. She walks towards the staircase and I said, what are you doing? She replied, going upstairs and went upstairs. I clearly heard heavy thumping footfalls recede upstairs and her doors opening and closing. So I sit for about a minute or two, still on the computer, when the front door opens once more. I turn around, confused because my parents were both asleep and Rachel was upstairs. Even so, she'd locked the front door, so naturally I th thought a person was trespassing. So I was flipping out, but then my sister walks in and heads towards the staircase. At this, asked her if she already went up and why she was going up again. She looked at me as if I were crazy and said, I haven't been inside until now, walking upstairs. To this day, it creeps me out because I saw the image of my sister walking upstairs before it happened. Whether it was a ghost or some doppelganger is indeterminable to me, but it certainly is weird. Needless to say, I chased her upstairs and checked her room in my room, in every room for that matter, but there was no one else up there.